Well, you, with Trevor, one thing as a, as a coach, when you go over with your, before the game, your game plan, or, and over stuff plays that you practice all the time, the thing before they walk out in the ice is that their speech to pump them up. And after a while, those speeches get, you know, they just went fall on deaf ears. With Trevor in the dressing room, you never, ever had to pump those players up. And, and uh, when they come out of that dressing room, Trevor led the team. Those kids were three feet off the ground, and he had them wired. What I really liked about Trevor was uh, it's a perfect um, connection with the players because, uh, you know, you don't want to speak to every player directly all the time as the coach, but you could tell Trevor what you wanted, and he commanded and uh, earned so much respect that uh, he was, if I wanted something done or felt we needed to look at something a certain way, I'd just tell him, he'd go in the room, and he would tell everyone that this is the way we were going to do it. Uh, the first time I heard about Trevor Ettinger was we were, uh, the Screaming Eagles drafted him and, you know, going to camp. I knew we were both from, you know, the same area and so we, you know, I knew he was this big kid and played our local hockey and I remember going into camp and he, you know, he came up to me and he said, hey, you're Josh Dill, right? And I said, yeah, and, hey, how you doing? He said, kind of cool, we're both from Hans County. So I said, yeah, so from, from that day on, you know, we kind of, we were best of buddies and did a lot together and his legacy of Trevor Ettinger was the the big six foot seven kid with the big smile and you know he was the mean the mean guy with the big smile Trevor, um, as a player, I mean, he was a jokester. But what Trevor could do is that he could tell jokes and keep a straight face. So he was in the dressing room different times, and if I was speaking in the dressing room and I seen people that weren't paying attention or laughing or whatever, I would, you know, say, hey, I would end up benching him the first couple of shifts or whatever. So Trevor always sat next to Ryan Flint, and Ryan would he could not keep a straight face, so Trevor would be digging him. He would be getting in crap, and all along it was Trevor, and I'd be benching Flynn. I did it more than once, and Trevor, we find out later, is that Trevor would do it, and he was always getting things, he would laughing, but when it came down to seriousness, he was serious, but he, he flew under the radar uh, a lot. I got a million stories I could tell. I don't, I don't even know where to start, but I mean, I do remember one game, we, we all knew he was getting traded, it was all through the papers and you know, he obviously he was a big a big guy and he, he fought a lot and so he had uh, Philip Grandier bent over the penalty box and th this guy's six foot seven as well and I remember he was looking at me and he's saying, hit him, hit him, and so he had him in the bench so I started hitting him and I got kicked out and he got kicked out in the dress room. He just comes over to me and he's, he's roaring and laughing. And he says, you know, you know, the best thing about it, and he's like, you guys play them next weekend and I'm not gonna be here. <laughs> so to me, I, I'll always remember that, so it was great. I know my role and I know how to play it and that's, that's just the way it's gonna work. looking down the bench and all of a sudden I saw Trevor hop onto the ice and he wasn't told to go on the ice, he just hopped over the boards and none of the players were changing. He hopped over the boards and uh, went directly at the other team's bench and hopped into the other team's bench and uh, then he proceeded to you know, let, it, let his presence be felt and uh, when I told him that, uh, Trevor, he just got me suspended for three games, uh, he was felt really bad about that.
Well, when I, fr I first took uh, over as the head coach in Moncton with the Wildcats, it was good to know that uh, we had a guy of Trevor's uh, stature. I mean, he was, uh, as, as I went on to see, he was the toughest guy in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. And he uh, enjoyed the role. And he combined that, and he, but he, you know, not only was he tough and gritty and game, he was a uh, good play too. His shot was amazing. It was that hard. I mean, uh, I seen him score a goal in, in, uh, back there when he played hockey for me that was in another net. The goaltender was still standing there. It was in and gone. It was, he could, he would almost need a videotape to see whether it went in or not. It was that hard. He was a good hockey player. You know, he was big, he was physical, and you know, he was feared by, you know, in Major Junior, everyone in our league was scared, you know, very scared of Trevor Ettinger, but not just because he was big and mean, but he, he was a good hockey player as well. So he was, a, you know, an all around good hockey player. Trevor was beyond a, the rough, tough, whatever, there was more to it than that. And you have to be that good. And so it wasn't just the toughness, he was, he was skilled and uh, he worked at it. He worked very hard at it. He was the leader that he brought everyone together as a team and everything was team focused and like I said even if it wasn't on the ice if it was off the ice he was he was just the guy that made you you know a better player a better person he just you know he was one of those guys that there was no negativity so everything around him was you know he was just positive when everything was wrong and you know he'd go out and break his hand and he'd be in getting his hand frozen or doing whatever and then he'd be back on the ice and you know someone would hit a teammate or say something and then you know he'd be at it again it didn't matter if he had broken hands or you know 150 stitches in his face like when he got kicked in the head with a skate you know two weeks later he's back on the ice you know he was disappointed because he missed a few games for that so he was just you know he was basically you know a, a true leader in all aspects. We have some fights, ladies and gentlemen. Bobby Reed is in there. Buddy Dick also in there, but he's hitting from behind. Trevor Ettinger. Patrick Yetman falls down on top of the Bobby Reed. That's Yetinger entering the Wildcats. Bobby Reed also. You know, I'm really happy to be back uh, back on the ice and uh, be able to help the team to win. Uh, he's fought a tougher battle than any one of us will ever dream of fight, you know what I mean? And uh, it's just, uh, like, I can't say enough about the guy. He's, uh, I look up to him and I know everybody else in Russian does. And like I said, we've got we to feed off his, uh, his attitude and uh, will to win. And I think we'll be fun. Being a leader is that not everybody are, have that, you know, personality. Trevor, just his, his mannerism and whatever, he's respected his teammates. And as long as I can remember is that uh, to get respect, you got to give respect. And Trevor always gave you a benefit of the doubt. And he, I, I guess the people around him respect him for that. And plus he was a leader. I mean, whatever he, if he was on the ice, he would give you 100% all the time. If there was a, you know, a criteria for captains, uh, uh, Trevor's name would be, be beside it. He did everything that he could to get drafted. Uh, into the National Hockey League, and he didn't take any shortcuts. Is presenting the game jersey to uh, Trevor, and also presenting Trevor with a going away gift as well.
He, uh, in the community, you know, his billets, everyone knew him as the, you know, the team player that he did everything for the team, the community, and, you know, his family, you know, his mother was, Trevor's mother meant the world to him, and that's all he talked about was, you know, Edna, and when he was on the phone, you know, he was always smiling when he was talking to his mom, and he knew how much, you know, without his mother, you know, family was so important to him. So when family came to hockey, he, when he was on the ice, he was, he put his helmet on and he was there to play. And when he took his helmet off, you know, he was just the happy-go-lucky guy that everyone knew and he wanted to be involved with, you know, the team and the organization and everyone in the community. So that's what, you know, Trevor Ettinger, I remember Trevor is. Uh, Trevor could befriend the Pope. I mean, he was a type of uh, a person that was a five-year-old or if you're 80 year old, so he'd get set down and talk to him. And with Trevor also, I mean, he used to come home uh, at Christmas time. He would always come to the rink and I'd have my team there. He would bring hockey sticks, blades, hand them out, and he spent time. He would actually talk to kids, didn't matter what age. And you know what, it, it, it just goes without saying, his, his personality was beyond his years. I mean, as far as being wise, it was just like it was a 15 year old, like he was a 35 year old, and just his personality was just second to none. I mean, Trevor Ettinger, he knew where he came from. You know, he he didn't ever look back. You know, he wasn't, when you're at that age, you know, you look back and you see guys that, you know, with a lot of ego, and, you know, you don't, they don't really represent at the time what they are. But Trevor, from day one, he knew where he came from. He was very proud of it. And, he recognized who helped him along the way, and you know, just so many words to describe him as, but he was just, you know, he was a brother, he was a friend, he was a teammate, he was everything. You know, he was everything you could ask for in a, in a friend and a teammate. You know, he was a family guy, he was, he was just very special, I guess. Twenty fifteen East Hant Sport Hall of Fame inductee Trevor Ettinger.